are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. We are talking suicide prevention with our guests from the Tennessee Suicide Prevention Network. They do a great job, and the essence of this show is that um, there are resources out there, a lot of them, with very good people like these here to help you. And uh, we've got some more phone calls. Let's let's go to. I think next is Renee. Good morning, Renee. Yes. Good morning, Hi. everyone. Hello. Hi. Listen, um, I am a former teacher and turned author and I also suffered from um, well depression um, and what I found out is um, when you're in that depressive state you just feel bad and usually you feel bad about you mm. so you need something um, you mentioned the word resources just a second ago so I'd like to recommend a resource um, it is a book that I wrote and it's a poetry book and it has journal pages with it. And the reason I think it is a good idea was was good for me as I was writing it and using it. And other people have told me the same is that a person can connect with themselves once they read something that is inspirational, and then they start to write with it. Then they start to have an epiphany. And so the book is called Epiphanies of the Soul: Fifty Two Life Principles to Live and Love By. And I would suggest that the individuals on the panel get that book because sometimes if you're down and you're depressed there's nobody there to hold your hand so you need a way to improve your own mood enough then you can reach out because I, I heard uh, one of the panelists say uh, about the students she just interacts with that she wanted them to know that they could reach out because they are not isolated yeah but if they're in their dorm room say for example and they don't have anyone right there and they're feeling really terrible. But if they remember, hey, they've got this resource and they saw something in there once that made them feel good, that made them feel better, mm -hmm. perhaps that might help them to prevent going through with this act of suicide. So I would strongly recommend that for the panelists. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I mean, and she's talking about a book. Now there's some, I want to piggyback on that, who would say that we're more connected than ever before. But I would make the argument, and what I mean by that is stuff like Facebook. Mm -hmm. I think Facebook, and, and there's a lot of merits to it, but isolates us more than anything. That's me. You can get on there. I think Facebook can depress you. Because, you know, whenever anyone's posting on Facebook, they're painting this pretty dang picture, and the world's great, and you're reading, well, I didn't get to do that, or whatever, it can depress you. Well, you know, half, no. 90% of the stuff on Facebook's crap, all right? And you can't believe half the stuff people are posting on there. I'm sorry. But I think that drives people to depression half the time. So we aren't the, are we more connected than ever before or not? And is there anything to what I'm saying about the social media contributing to suicide? Yes. Okay. Thank I, you. I mean, Step I would say there, yes. I think only so. because I mean, we we don't have conversations as much right. anymore. We right. don't talk on the phone. It's just text, telling and bragging or, about what you've done. And and it definitely can be uh, isolating. <clears throat> it definitely can be triggering for a lot of folks who maybe I mean. have right. um, those maybe are isolated and say, oh, hi, T Timmy on the other side of the country is doing all these magical right. things. Right, it makes you feel more isolated. It can, I agree. for sure. So what's really important and what we try to do at TSPN is uh, try to, with our social media, put out those positive messaging, making sure that everybody is aware not only of the National Suicide Prevention mm -hmm. Lifeline number, that 1-800-273-8255, yeah, right. uh, the text line. So because we don't talk on phones anymore, we might want to text uh, if we need that help that we need. So once uh -huh. again, it works the same way as the National Lifeline number, but if you text TN, like Tennessee, to 741-741, it'll be responded to in a matter of minutes. Really? Yes, so sir. what was that? What, yeah, I think that's great. What do you do? Because yeah. again, social media can also be a wonderful tool. Exactly. So, um, yeah. all right, so if you, oh. So yeah. you text TN yes, sir. to 741-741, seven, four, one, seven, four, four, one. and you send a text like, if you if I, I need some help, is there yeah. someone there? And you guys would text. Yeah, yes. it's responded to within. That's so awesome. And, and, and magically, yeah. like yeah. Tennessee is one of the the foremost states uh, in the nation that is using the crisis text line. It is a national uh, organization, a national number once again. But, but it's a crisis text line, yes, and Tennessee is one of four. So you text TN to seven four one seven four one. Yeah. Well, it's it's being used all over the country, oh, yeah. but Tennessee, because we have publicized it so much um, it's being used so much in our in our in the country and so 
Um, so we're real excited about that. And so um, I really think that uh, for th folks that really want to get involved, you can go to our website at mm -hmm. tspn.org, not ESPN.org. Yeah. People remember that. <laughs> yeah, but that'll help. And, and yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's a on our homepage, you'll see Get Involved, and then they can just fill it out, and we can send it across the state to folks that are wanting to get involved. And so, yeah. And Nick, another yes. e yeah. example of a resource directory that we compile uh, for every region of the state with almost every possible oh, wow. Look at all the outreach support uh, resources uh, is also available uh, to every citizen. So this list psychiatric hospitals, yes. yeah. um, all the crisis lines. Yeah. How does someone get one of these pamphlets? It's on our website. Okay. Oh, the information. Yeah. Now, if someone, or, there are or people at the out office, there that yes. just, uh, okay. we hand them out when we have when you uh, go to different when we have presentations know, and trainings. And absolutely, but we hand out a lot of written. Uh, mm -hmm. empirical research material for uh, for folks to know because you know we want to look at the prevention piece we want to look at the intervention piece and then we want to look at the postvention piece when things do happen sure sure um, so I think we are a very fortunate state in terms of tools and resources and a network uh, available to us you know want to offer courage offer inspiration and offer hope to Tennesseans and and despite everything we are doing we continue to have um, um, folks who take their lives but you know we want to continue to be there Do you see as a well. change in uh, obviously Tennessee and with Fort Campbell mm -hmm. and the veterans committing suicide and mm -hmm. that's just such a tragic byproduct of what happens when some of these folks come back from overseas mm -hmm. and I, I remember there there were some studies uh, what, a year or two ago that it was just disturbing the number, the rate of suicides. Some of those soldiers coming back to Fort Campbell. Now, I mean, do you deal with that? And I guess many of them come back, for, and there's a lot of reasons for it: mm -hmm. post-traumatic stress and all that. Um, what about for veterans then? There's, there's quite a bit on here. I mean, is it the same type for them services as there would be for perhaps a high school student, or do they go someplace else? Well, we see with our veterans, and what we don't want to do is we don't want to stigmatize veterans mm -hmm. and think because veterans served our country Sorry, that they are uh, those that die by suicide mm -hmm. because we know that a lot of veterans, we know that mm -hmm. active duty folks ha have never gone overseas, um, mm -hmm. that the folks that are dying by suicide have never even served in a war, um, that the risk factors are those that are dealing with uh, crisis within home, relationships, right. alcohol and drugs. Um, we've seen those numbers in our country uh, actually instead of having 22 veterans die by suicide it's now gone down to 20 veterans one suicide is one suicide too many mm -hmm. uh, we've created uh, the first uh, veteran and suicide statewide task force just recently uh, in our state and so we're working on a statewide plan uh, we want to applaud our veterans for serving our country um, but again, we don't want to stigmatize our veterans just because they've served. Oh, of course not. And, and, um, I guess, but, but the loved ones need to pay attention, I guess. Exactly. And just like we were talking about other warning signs, this, this pamphlet here that you showed me has, mm -hmm. you know, the suicides unique to veterans. I think this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Calling old friends, particularly military friends, mm -hmm. to say goodbye. Cleaning a weapon that they may have as a souvenir. Now mm -hmm. that may be innocent enough, but mm -hmm. you know, in coupling with visits to graveyards, obsession with news coverage of military operations, wearing their uniform or part of their uniform when not required, frequently talking about how honorable it is to be a soldier. Again, by themselves, any of these are fine maybe, but you know, sleeping more, becoming overprotective of children, standing guard over the house, stopping your prescription medicine, mm -hmm. hoarding all, all of those. All right, so now, if someone notices some of um, these things happening as a loved one, so, approaching a, a, a veteran perhaps, and or anyone else to get them to get help, how do you do that? Again, they're calling the 1-800-273-TALK. The loved one does. Yes. Now, you, they may not be willing to do that themselves, uh -huh. right? So, But getting, getting involved. Um, and so the unique thing about the veteran population is calling the 1-800-273-TALK line, pressing one, and then it goes into a veteran call center there's two locations in the country, and they can pull up that veteran's 
uh, screen and to find out when the last time they were seen at the VA or an outpatient clinic. They can find out if they were ever, um, if they were on any medication, if they had seen someone. Mm -hmm. um, and they can triage that person that a suicide prevention uh, coordinator or manager in the local area will follow up with that family the next day or that afternoon. Okay. And so that's where they're saving lives. And so um, it's 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 amazing what what what's been going on with that population. That's so. good that that's gotten a lot of mm -hmm. attention too. Listen, we'll take a break. We'll come back. Our final segment yeah. where we can touch on the main points you want to leave with our viewers, and uh, we'll put up some of that information again. We'll make sure you have the number for the National Suicide mm -hmm. Prevention Hotline as well. So if you have any calls, questions, last segment coming up with our guests right after this. Stay with us. Last.